Chapter 29 Horace was studying the collapsed western side of the palisade, with the foreman of the work gang assigned to repair it. This section of the work had lagged behind the rest of the repairs. The greater part of the palisade was in good condition now. The walkways had been reinforced and in some places replaced entirely, and the wall timbers refurbished where necessary with new strong logs. But the collapsed section had problems beyond the simple ravages of time. The foreman pointed to a deep channel cut in the ground beneath the ruined palisade. This area becomes a watercourse when the snow melts, Kurukuma, he said. The runoff water has gradually undermined the foundations of the wall at this point and washed them away. We'll have to set new foundations. Horace scratched his chin. And hope it doesn't rain. No point in repairing it if it's all going to be swept away again, he said thoughtfully. But the foreman shook his head. It's too cold for rain. It'll snow, but there'll be no water running through here until spring, when the snows melt. Even then, it would take a few seasons for enough damage to be done. This didn't happen in one or two years. Horace studied the man for a moment. He looked confident, and he certainly seemed to know his craft. Very well, let's get on with it. I won't be happy until I know the entire palisade is up to strength. We should be able to fix it in a few days. Now the other repairs are almost finished. I can assign extra work gangs to this part. Very well, said Horace. He gestured for the man to go ahead and turned away, heading back up the slope to the small settlement of cabins that had already been created by the hard-working Kikori. A small group of the younger men had been excused from labouring work, and the commander of Shigaru's personal guard had begun their instruction in the art of senshi sword technique. He was demonstrating the basic movements to them now, calling a tempo for each cut, block or thrust. Horace stopped to watch, fascinated by the different style. It seemed far more ornate and ritualistic than the drills he was used to. More, he searched for a word, and then found it, flamboyant with its spins and sweeps. But beneath the foreign technique, he could discern a similarity of purpose. Now Mocha, the guard commander, ceased his demonstration and called for the Kikori to repeat the sequence. They were armed with swords taken from the raiding party wiped out at Riverside Village. Mocha watched, stony-faced, as the young Kikori tried to emulate his movements. They were sadly uncoordinated and clumsy in their execution. Reto was standing nearby watching as well. He saw Horace and moved to join him. They're not too good, are they? Horace said. Reto shrugged. Senshi begin learning this when they're ten years old, he said. It's asking a lot for timber workers to learn it in a few weeks. I wonder if they'll learn in a few months, Horace said gloomily. They'll be facing warriors who have been training since they were ten. Reto nodded. He thought the same thing. But what's the alternative? Horace shook his head. I wish I knew. Even if the palisade and the massive cliffs either side kept them safe for the winter, he found he was dreading the confrontation with Arasaka's Senshi army in the spring. Sometimes I think we're just postponing the inevitable, he said. Before Reto could reply, they heard Horace's name being shouted. They turned and looked down the valley, to where they could see the excited figure of Mikuru and his two young companions. Several of the Kikori stopped their sword drill to turn and look as well. As they did, their instructor shouted angrily at them to get back to work. Sheepishly, they resumed their practice. Let's see what Mikuru wants, Horace said. He looks excited, Reto observed. Maybe it's good news. That'd make a change, Horace said as they walked down the sloping valley floor to meet the young man. Mikuru saw them coming and stopped running. He paused, hunched over with his hands on his knees, while he got his breath back. We found it, Kurokuma, he said, still slightly breathless. 
For a moment, Horace wasn't sure what he was talking about. His head was still filled with thoughts of the repairs to the palisade and the seemingly hopeless task of turning timber workers into skilled swordsmen in the space of a few months. Then he remembered the task he had set for Mikaru a few days prior. The secret exit, he said. The boy nodded, beaming triumphantly at him. You were right, Kurokuma. It was there all the time. It's narrow and it's difficult, and it twists and turns. But it's there. Let's take a look at it, Horace said, and Mikaru nodded eagerly. He bounded away at a half run, then stopped after a few metres, looking back to see if Horace and Rato were following. He reminded Horace of an eager puppy, waiting restlessly for its master to catch up. Slow down, Mikaru, he said with a smile. It's been there hundreds of years. It's not going anywhere now. As the boy had said, the well-hidden path was narrow and difficult. It was a steep gully that ran down through the mountain, carving its way through the rock. In some places, Horace thought, it appeared to have been dug out by hand. Seemingly, the original occupants of Rankoshi had found a series of narrow gullies running down the mountain and connected them to form an almost indiscernible path leading down through the rock walls. They slithered and slid down one steep patch, sending a shower of small pebbles cascading before them, rattling off the rock walls either side. Not too easy to come up this way, Rato remarked. Horace glanced at him. That's how you'd want it. Most people would look at this and not recognise it as a back way into the fortress. And even if an attacker knew about it, I've seen half a dozen spots where ten men could hold off an army. Plenty of places to build deadfalls and traps as well, Rato said. You could only come up here in single file. Same going down, Horace said casually. You'd need a lot of time if you wanted to get a force down here. Down? Why would you want to go down? I mean, it's as well to know this route is here. We'll certainly need to fortify it and set up defensive positions to stop Arasaka using it and catching us by surprise. But why would you want to take a force down? He knew Horace couldn't be thinking of this as an escape route for the entire party. There were over 400 Kikori with them now, many of them women and children. It would take weeks to get everyone down this steep path to the mountain plateau below. And even if you could get everyone down, they would be seen almost as soon as they tried to escape across the open ground at the bottom. Horace shrugged and didn't answer. It was just a vague idea stirring in his mind. Everything he had done so far had been purely defensive. Rebuild the palisade. Find this track which instinct had told him must be here, and set up defences. But it was in Horace's nature to attack, to take the fight to the enemy, to surprise them. This track could make that possible. Although how he was going to mount an attack against professional warriors with only hastily trained timber workers, he had no idea. Not for the first time, he recognised the fact that he wasn't a planner or an innovator. He knew how to organise defences. He could study a position, assess its potential weaknesses, and move to strengthen and reinforce them. But when it came to devising an unexpected or unorthodox method of attack, he simply didn't know where to begin. I need halt or will for that, he muttered to himself. Reto looked at him curiously. What was that, Kurokuma? Horace shook his head. Nothing important, Reito-san. Let's follow this goat track down to the bottom. He set out after Mikaru. As usual, the young man had forged ahead of them, leaping like a mountain goat from one rock to another. At the bottom, the narrow track let out onto level ground. The entrance was well concealed. After a few metres, the gully made a sharp turn to the right. To a casual glance, it appeared to be a blind rock wall ending in a shallow indent in the face of the mountain. Shrubs and trees had grown over the entrance as well, and larger rocks were piled across it. 
Horace was willing to bet that hadn't happened by chance. The main entrance to the valley that led up to Rancoshi was around a bluff, about 300 metres away and hidden from sight. Horace studied the ground. Say you brought a hundred men down. Single file, no packs, just weapons. It would take the best part of a day. You could keep them concealed here while they formed up. Maybe do that in the dark so there was less chance of being seen. Once again, he didn't realise he had spoken his thoughts aloud. He was a little surprised when Rato answered him. You could do it, he agreed. But who are these hundred men you're talking about? We barely have forty senshi fit and ready to fight now, and Arasaka will have ten times that many. Horace nodded wearily. I know, I know, he said. I just can't help thinking. If we had a decent fighting force, we might be able to give Arasaka a nasty jolt. And if we had wings, we might be able to fly safely over the top of his army, Rato replied. Horace shrugged. Yes, I know. If, if, and if. Well, we've seen the back door. Let's get back up to the valley. Climbing back up took even longer. It was near dusk when Rato and Horace emerged from the tumble of rocks. Their clothes were torn in several places, and Horace was bleeding from a long scrape on his right hand, where he had unsuccessfully tried to stop himself sliding back down a steep pile of gravel and shale. You were right, Horace told his companion. It would be impossible to climb up there and fight a determined defender at the same time. Let's just make sure we've got defenders in place, Rato said. Horace nodded. Another detail to take care of tomorrow, he thought. As they stumbled down the last of the slope leading to the gully, voices began calling out to them. Horace narrowed his eyes against the gathering dark. There seemed to be a large group of people assembled by the open-sided hut that had been constructed as a communal eating house. He led the way towards them, but one of the Kikori detached himself from the group and ran to meet them. Kurokuma! Come quickly! We've caught five spies!